Welcome to the Know Your Records program. My name is Erin Townsend, and I'm the program coordinator. We are so happy you've joined us. The Know Your Records program provides information on how to access and conduct research using U.S. federal government records held at the National Archives. We have over 100 educational videos on how to conduct research available online. We invite you to join the conversation. During the video's premiere, you can participate with the presenters and other audience members via live chat. Ask questions and get the presenters' answers anytime throughout the video and for an additional 10 minutes after the presentation ends. Here's how to engage in the live chat. You can ask questions via chat by first logging into YouTube. Continue to watch the chat because the speaker will answer your questions there. Type your questions at any time throughout the presentation. Please keep your questions on today's topic. Our presentation today is titled New Deal Era Photographs Within the Holdings of the Still Picture Branch. More than 60 federal agencies and offices were created between 1933 and 1939. Consequently, New Deal Era photographic records are spread across many different record groups and series. Our presenters will provide an overview of still picture branch holdings that document New Deal era programs. They will specifically focus on series that contain images related to New Deal arts and culture programs, public works programs, rural and farm assistance, and land and wildlife conservation. We have two presenters joining us today, Sarah Serrani and Caitlin Crane Enriquez. Sarah is an archivist in the still picture branch. Before joining the National Archives in 2018, she received her Bachelor of Arts in History and Art History from Goucher College and her Master of Arts in Public History from American University. Caitlin is also an archivist in the Still Picture Branch, where she has worked since 2016. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in History from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and a Master of Library and Information Science degree from San Jose State University. Welcome, Sarah and Caitlin. Thank you for your presentation today. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Sarah and I are really excited to be speaking about New Deal era photographs within the holdings of the Still Picture Branch. So let's go ahead and get started. On March 4th, 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was sworn in as 32nd President of the United States. And when he took office, one in four Americans were out of work, um, and that equated to about 15 million unemployed workers. And in speaking to the millions of unemployed people, FDR says in his inaugural speech, our primary task is to put people to work. He goes on to lay out a plan on how to accomplish just that. He says that there will be direct recruiting by the government, the government will treat the task as they would treat the emergency of war, and people will be working on greatly needed projects to stimulate and reorganize the use of our natural resources. So FDR and Congress immediately began working on a new deal for the American people. And between 1933 and 1940, a wide range of legislation is passed with the goal of assisting Americans living in urban and rural areas through relief, recovery, and reform. Ultimately, New Deal legislation led to the creation of more than 60 federal agencies and offices. Additionally, some of the agencies that existed prior to 1933 saw the scope of their work expand and change in the 30s. So by the end of what we consider the New Deal era, the federal government had poured billions of dollars into projects and people. And by the time we enter World War II, the unemployment rate was about 10% compared to the height of the Great Depression, which saw a 24.9% unemployment rate. Today, the new um, we can see evidence of the New Deal, which was expansive. We see public buildings still standing, roads, tunnels, and airports that are still in use, and artwork that is on display. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Sarah. Thank you, Caitlin. Through the course of this presentation, we aim to provide a broad overview of Still Picture Branch holdings that document New Deal era projects and initiatives. We'll be specifically looking at the main series that document projects within the categories of arts and culture programs, public work programs, rural and farm assistance, land and wildlife conservation, 
We also hope to set expectations in terms of what researchers will and will not find among our holdings. Researchers should know that the still picture branch does not have photographs of individuals employed during the New Deal era. While we have photos that show workers, most often the individuals are not identified by name. Our photographs primarily document the project themselves, not necessarily the individuals that did the work. We do not have photographs of every project started or completed during the New Deal. New Deal photographs can also be found across the National Archives custodial units and across the United States within many different archival and museum institutions. Lastly, while we aim to provide as much information as possible about our holdings, the New Deal was far reaching and it's impossible to cover everything within one hour. The bulk of photographs range in date from the 1930s to the 1940s and cover subject matter such as pictorial reports, completed projects, arts, as well as many other related topics. And with that, we'd like to get into the arts and cultural programs. One of the largest record groups for New Deal records is Record Group 69, Works Progress Administration. The central file for photographs is the Series 69N. Nearly all subjects in our presentation are represented in the series, including photographs of buildings, roads, artwork, etc. The photographs themselves were produced by the photographic section of the WPA Information Division in Washington, D.C. The office was very busy, and at times, staff would produce up to 2,500 photographs per month. The series itself is organized by broad subject headings, such as art, education, public buildings, and more. But there's also a section organized by each state and territory. There are photographic prints to be used for reference, as well as copy negatives for reproductions, and the original negatives are kept for preservation. The Works Projects Administration, or the WPA, sought to employ millions through various public work projects. Typically, projects included public buildings and roads, which we'll also discuss. However, the efforts in also included employing artists, writers, musicians, and even actors. Programs included the Federal Art Project, Federal Writers Project, Federal Theater Project, Federal Music Project, and the Historical Record Survey. We'll talk more about the Historical Record Survey later on. However, we'd like to touch on our records related to the artistic projects. We should note that we do not house the original artwork itself from these projects. First, photographs documenting the Federal Art Project appear throughout Record Group 69. Included are photographs of the artwork, such as sculptures, paintings, posters, murals, etc. Also included are a few select photographs of the artists and the exhibitions the project sponsored. We should note that, unfortunately, our records cannot be searched using the project number, and it's not typical to always find a photograph of the artist. However, these records are best accessed by using our artist index, as well as searching by the locations each artist was active in. We've included a few relevant series of records here. Next, the Federal Theater Project re-employed a variety of theater workers, such as actors, directors, designers, vaudeville artists, stage technicians, and more. We house a variety of series with photographs of different stages of theater work. For example, the series 69TC includes a wide range of activities, including audiences, sets, backstage, workshops, etc. Additionally, the series 69TP includes posters and broadsheets to advertise productions. As an honorable mention, the series 69PIN has sketches of costumes for the New York Federal Theater's production of Pinocchio. Additionally, while the Federal Writers Project focused on employing writers and not necessarily had a focus on photographs or photography, we do house records related to their work. The main task through the project is the American Guide, which serves as a travel guide to all parts of the United States, plus Alaska, Puerto Rico, and the District of Columbia. The guide itself included photographs, which are highlighted in our series 69GU. 
As expected, these prints are organized by state or territory. To promote the guide itself, the project also produced posters to distribute, which appear in our series 69 GP. To bridge the gap between the arts and the people, we should note that many programs encourage the use of art throughout public buildings. The main record group we will focus on is record group 121, Records of the Public Building Service. The bulk of records in 121 focus on the construction and finished buildings themselves. However, from 1933 to 1942, the government administered four separate arts projects. There are slight overlaps between the associated series of records in our holding due to the ranges of dates. However, typically each artist employed by their associated project falls within the series of records seen here. Each series of records is organized slightly differently. However, they're typically arranged by building or location, as well as by artist name. Some series require reviewing an index first. We should also note that while many of the murals and artwork were completed in color, we unfortunately have virtually no colored photographs. Here are a few examples of the drawings and ultimate finished products that can be found in these records. You'll note the variety of subject matter, including public work projects, as well as American history, as well as the variety of locations of the art. We should also note that the US General Service Administration is currently undergoing a project to inventory, locate, and catalog artworks created by these programs. To date, more than 23,000 artworks have been located. Seen here is the sculpture Express Man or Express Mail Carrier by Heinz Warnicke made in 1936. On the left is a photograph of the finished sculpture in our holdings, and on the right is a photograph by Carol Highsmith taken in 2011 while it was located at the Ariel Rios Federal Building. The sculpture is now located at the William Jefferson Clinton Federal Building in Washington, D.C. A great example of the promotion of art in public buildings are the numerous contests held to decorate various public buildings, including post offices, hospitals, offices, and more. The Still Picture Branch houses a variety of series which include the sketches submitted for the competition to photographs of the finalized murals in situ. Similar to the previously listed records, these series are organized by location and artist names. This is an example of a drawing entered into the 48 states competition for murals to be placed in post offices in 1939 from the series 121 FES. Additionally, the series 121 CMS is fully digitized online and includes photographs of murals and sculptures created for post offices and other federal buildings throughout the United States. Seen here is a photograph of the finished mural in the post office in Bethesda, Maryland. While the building is now a county office building, the mural is still on view today as seen in the bottom image. While the programs employed artists, I also wanted to touch on other projects that brought the art to the, itself to the people. Within the main series of WPA photographs we already mentioned, 69N, there are photographs of various smaller projects that encourage learning skills through arts, crafts, and reading, to name a few subjects. Here's a few examples of smaller programs, such as the art caravan, pack horse librarians, and general skill building classes. And that concludes our section on arts, and I will pass it off to Caitlin. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, I'm now going to be covering public works projects. The term public works is a broad category, but generally we are talking about engineering, construction, and utilities that are carried out by the government for the benefit of the public. So during the New Deal era, the completion of public works projects was essential to job creation. As such, Congress expanded and formalized the public work policy of the New Deal under Title II of the National Industrial Recovery Act. So Title II of this act was subsequently what led to the creation of multiple federal agencies, including the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, or FERA, the Public Works Administration, or the PWA, the Civil Works Administration, or the CWA, and later the Works Progress Administration, also called the Works Projects Administration, or simply the WPA. 
So within the records of the still picture branch, photographic records created by FIRA, the CWA, the WPA, and the PWA are generally found within record group 69 and record group 135. But as I'll cover later in the session, photographs of New Deal era public works projects are not just limited to RG69 or RG135. So I want to start this section with an overview of Record Group 69. Sarah already noted that within the Still Picture Branch, RG69 is the largest record group in terms of New Deal era documentation. And while Sarah covered RG69 series within the context of arts and culture programs, our unit also maintains more than 50 different WPA series. So in this section, I've attempted to organize and group together RG69 series that specifically highlight public works projects. So the first category within RG69 I have here are a series that contain photographs produced for related agencies related to the WPA or series that contain images that were produced by predecessor agencies. And what I hope to illustrate here is that when looking through New Deal era records, researchers should be aware that the New Deal agencies had overlapping functions, duties, and interests, especially when it comes to public work projects. It's also important to note that multiple agencies that were created during this time period, only some of them only existed for a handful of years before they were dissolved. And sometimes those functions of the defunct agency were rolled into whatever newly created agency um, replaced it. And today our records reflect those administrative and structural changes that we are frequently seen throughout the 1930s. And our records are also a reflection of the overlapping interest of the New Deal agencies. So I have two series here to illustrate that point. Let's take the Federal Emergency Relief Administration as an example. I've included on this slide the series 69 FERA, which is a series of photographs produced by FIRA prior to the existence of the WPA. FIRA was a grant making agency that was authorized to distribute federal aid to the states for relief. And the Civil Works Administration or the CWA was actually a subdivision within FIRA. The functions of FIRA and the CWA were consolidated in 1935 and were replaced by the Works Project Administration. So FIRA was an agency that existed separately from the WPA, but when the WPA took over some of FIRA's functions, the WPA presumably also took over some of the record keeping, including photographic records. So in the still picture branch, researchers will find that the majority of our FIRA records are within record group 69. In other words, even though FIRA was never part of the WPA or vice versa, there is no separate record group for FIRA. I've also listed 69 PWA, Photographs of Public Works Administration Projects. I'll talk more about the PWA in a moment um, when I talk about Record Group 135, but I've included it here because I want to illustrate how these agencies and their records overlap, how their record keeping is often connected. So as an example of this overlap and connection, I want to highlight the photographs in 69 PWA. These images were produced or taken by the WPA to specifically document the work that was being completed on PWA funded projects. The PWA was the agency responsible for funding the public works projects, while the WPA was directly hiring people to complete those projects. So they're two separate agencies working together on the same project, and there's overlap in that record keeping. Essentially, knowing the administrative history of a particular agency is important to a to New Deal era research. And this is because, as we can see by these two examples, there are complexities in record keeping that came as a result of so many agencies and offices working together. And because multiple agencies only existed for a short period of time and their records were rolled into a new agency. So while the WPA maintained photographic records created by or for predecessor and related agencies, they also maintained their own records. And as I've mentioned, there are over 50 series within RG69 in the still picture branch. While the WPA maintained photographic records created by or for predecessor and related agencies, the WPA also maintained photographic files documenting WPA specific projects. So as I've already mentioned, we have over 50 series within RG69 and we have a lot of records within RG69 because 
of all of the public work programs that came out of the New Deal, the WPA was the largest and most diverse. The WPA employed 8.5 million people, and it is reported that the agency was responsible for 8,000 new and improved parks, 16,000 miles of new water lines, 650,000 miles of new or improved roads, and the production of 382 million articles of clothing. And I bring up these numbers to illustrate the scope of the work completed by the WPA and to highlight just how many people were involved. It is no wonder why we do not have photographs of every single WPA project completed. So we do have thousands of photographs in RG69, but only a fraction of the projects are documented among our records. So outside of 69N, which again is the central WPA series, we have other series that are important to look at and when researchers really want to make sure that they don't overlook anything. So the four series here, 69PR, 69PS, 69MP, and 69NS primarily consist of photographs taken for reports or they are photographs that were sent from those local WPA offices to the headquarter office in Washington, D.C. And I also want to point out that like the photographs in these four series were used for reports or as like here is a report of the progress on these projects, but we don't have a ton of textual reports interfiled among those photographs. And there is some duplication between the central file 69N when compared to the photographs in these four series, but Roughly 50 to 60% of the photos in these four series, again, 69 PR, PS, MP, and NS, are not duplicated in 69N. So researchers who are looking at public works projects will want to look in 69N in addition to these other smaller series in order to identify all of the possible photographs that we might have related to their public works project. Most of our images in our series are not location specific, but we do have these five series that document WPA work in specific locations. Those locations are Wisconsin, Texas, New York, and New England. These series are outliers. The Still Picture Branch doesn't have other WPA photographic series that are entirely location specific. All of our series, all of our RG69 series, you know, have multiple states covered. These are just five that are specific to these locations. So if you happen to be looking for photographs in New York, Wisconsin, Texas, or New England, I highly suggest branching out to here. I do want to point out that 69CWA and 69CM are interesting because not only do they contain photographs from a predecessor agency, the Civil Works Administration, but they also document CWA projects completed in Wisconsin. I'm not entirely sure why Wisconsin is significantly represented among our RG69 records when we don't have any other representation like that. I can only hypothesize and my best guess is that the local CWA office was really adamant and stayed on top of submitting photographs to the Washington DC office. But again, it's just speculation. Moving on to 69PT, projects in Texas and other states. Texas is the primary state that is documented in this series, but 20 to 22% of the photos do show other states. I've included an example of that. Um, I have a photo taken in Oklahoma within 69PT, but primarily that is a, a series that documents Texas. Moving on, 69NY is specific to New York City. I do want to note that New York City was often referred to as the 49th state, especially among the WPA photographs. So you'll see that in some of our other series too. We'll have New York State listed and then New York City listed separately. And lastly, 69NYA, the National Youth Administration photographs. The NYA was an office within the WPA for four years before it was transferred to the Federal Security Agency. So moving on to Record Group 135, Records of the Public Works Administration, or the PWA. The PWA was one of the New Deal's earliest programs. It is definitely not as well known as the WPA. But between 1933 and 1939, the PWA was responsible for building 70% of all new schools, 65% of all new courthouses, and 35% of all new hospitals. The PWA also contributed to the completion of hundreds of large-scale public works projects. So despite how much funding they offered and how many projects they completed, within the records of the Still Picture Branch, we only have four series within Record Group 135. And all four of those series relate to this survey, the Survey of Architecture of Completed Projects of the Public Works Administration. Our main series is 135SA, 
The series includes eight large photo albums that also contain some textual information. On this slide, you'll see an example of one of those albums, as well as a page from the index. This index I have recently digitized and added to the NARA catalog, so people can review it after this presentation if they are interested. It is organized in two parts. Part one is by state or territory, and they're under by PWA assigned docket number. Sarah mentioned earlier that most of our records don't have project numbers or docket numbers. This is a uh, unique in that sense, but it's also not necessary to have because there's a second part of this index that is organized by the name of the leading federal agency and they're under by state. So that brings us to a search example. And what I hope researchers take away from this portion of the presentation is that when it comes to public works projects during the New Deal era, there were so many different federal and state agencies involved. And while the WPA or RG69 is a great place to search for photographic documentation, and RG135 is a great place to see those completed views of these public works projects, there are other places that researchers can look. So I always like to tell researchers to come to the Still Picture Research Room knowing all of the various federal agencies or stakeholders that had an interest in the project. So I want to take a look at the Grand Coulee Dam as an example of this. It was a massive New Deal era public works project that involved a number of agencies. And so here I have listed just some basic facts. Construction began in 1933 after FDR appropriated $63 million. The Bureau of Reclamation um, was the federal agency in charge of building the dam. The Bureau of Rec also used labor from the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps as well as the WPA. And we also know that Native American tribes fought and rejected the construction of the dam. So in just knowing these basic facts, without getting into the finer details of the project, we can identify four record groups we should be searching in, in order to locate images related to this project. And that is Record Group 35, Civilian Conservation Corps, Record Group 69, um, record Group 75, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and then um, Record Group 115, the Bureau of Reclamation. And as you can also see on this slide, I have two aerial images that were taken by the Army Air Forces. So that's record group 18. So there are definitely other record groups that have created photographic records for this project. It's all about identifying any federal agencies that potentially had an interest for one reason or another to be in this area and documenting this project. So I had never actually done any research to locate images of the Grand Coulee Dam. So this was for me, like starting from scratch, I decided to start with Record Group 115 because the Bureau of Rec was in charge of the construction. So I reviewed all of the series titles in our holdings and I found one series that seemed to fit the best and that was Local Identifier 115-C, Civilian Conservation Corps Activities at Various Bureau of Reclamation Projects. So I went to the finding aid and sure enough, Grand Coulee Dam was listed. I was happily surprised to find around 100 photographs in this series. So they were records produced by the Bureau of Reclamation documenting CCC work at a PWA funded site. This overlap is really seen in this series. And there were quite a few scenes of CCC workers here and they were taken, these images were taken at different times in the project. So these two photographs were taken seven months apart or six or seven months apart. So there are various stages of construction that are documented throughout the building. Next, I went to Record Group 69. I decided to go to the central um, file 69N, and I browsed through the records that were just indexed under the state of Washington, which does mean that you were looking through a lot of different type of work that was done in that state, but I was able to find some photographs of the Grand Coulee Dam. But like I said, there are other 69, RG69 series to look in, so I decided to go look in around and see what else I could find. And I talked about 69 PWA earlier, and that's where I decided to go for this. Again, it was a PWA funded project and it had WPA workers there. And this series 100% matched what I was looking for. I found additional photographs of WPA workers at the Grand Coulee Dam. And I want to note that in terms of what I found in 69N and what I found in 69 PWA, there was no duplication. These were different images. So researchers who are looking at these very large projects will want to look throughout Record Group 69 to find all of the various types of images that might exist. And then I decided to move on to Record Group 75, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. 
we noted that American uh, Native American tribes were opposed to the building of the dam. So I just wanted to see out of curiosity if there was any representation of within record group 75. So I just checked the central file, which is 75N, and we did have a, a folder for the Grand Coulee Dam. When I looked in that folder, there were 11 photographs of tribal members visiting the dam when it opened in 1941. And I will say these photos don't really hint at or give way to the real views and feelings that tribal members had about the Grand Coulee Dam, but the photos do include names of individuals pictured, and researchers could potentially use that information as a lead to gather more information about the perspective of tribal members. And lastly, um, because again, it's a PWA funded project, I decided to look in record group 135. And as I've noted, all of our record group 135 series in one way or another relate back to this architectural survey. So I reviewed the index seen here on the left and I used the second portion of the index. So I went to the projects that were listed under the interior department. As you can see on this index page, the Grand Coulee Dam was included in the survey and it is on pages 1595 and 1596. Textual information typically includes details about the project and important details about the area where the project was completed. These albums are very large. They are hard to re reproduce from, but you can make a reproduction using an overhead camera and a copy stand, but you may need assistance handling the albums as they are very large and very heavy. And with that, that brings us to the end of this section on public works projects. Next, we are going to be looking at rural and farm assistance and land and wildlife conservation. Arguably, there is some overlap between these two categories, and that's especially evident when we are talking about soil conservation service. So we've decided to talk about these two categories together. And there are a few different record groups we could have chosen to cover in this section. And to be fair, each one of our sections could very well have been their own standalone presentation. But for the purposes of this presentation, I've decided to highlight records that are not necessarily the most popular within the still picture branch, but they have excellent coverage of the New Deal era. So I've chosen to highlight record group 33, records of the extension service. This was not an agency created during the New Deal, but its scope of work expanded in the 30s. Record group 79, records of the National Park Service, which I will only briefly touch on. Record group 114, um, currently named the Natural Resources Conservation Service, but in the 1930s was the Soil Conservation Service. And lastly, record group 221, the Rural Electrification Administration. And I also wanna note that we understand that records of the Civilian Conservation Corps are really popular. They do get requested quite often, but we did cover in detail RG35 in a previous presentation, which I've linked to here. So if researchers think that we're leaving out the CCC, we really aren't. There is a very detailed presentation about them from 2018, and I highly suggest reviewing that as well. So working in numerical order, let's start with record group 33. The still picture branch has 45-ish series within RG33, and if I'm being honest, the RG33 primarily documents 4-H programs, and like I cannot understate how many photographs we have related to 4-H programming. But was what is most interesting to me, and what I hope that researchers find interesting after this presentation, are the earlier RG33 series that contain photographs documenting farms and rural American life. The early RG33 photographs were mostly taken by a handful of photographers, with George W. Ackerman being the most prolific. It is estimated that in his 40-year career as a government photographer, he took close to 50,000 images. Ackerman also made a point to not only photograph white Americans, but black Americans and other underrepresented groups. I will only be talking about one series within RG33 today, and that's 33SC. This series does have a handful of prints, photographic prints, but I would consider it a negative only series. There's, I believe, 20 something boxes of negatives and one box of prints, just to put that into perspective. I suspect this is one of the reasons this series just isn't pulled or used as much when compared to other series or record groups that document farm life in rural America, like record group 16, the Department of Agriculture, which is requested far more often in our research room. But 33SC does a very good job of capturing different aspects of rural and farm life across the United States. I skimmed through all the captions and found 42 states were represented in varying degrees. So meaning some states have a few images while some states are heavily documented. 
Alaska, Colorado, Delaware, Hawaii, Idaho, Kentucky, Rhode Island, and Puerto Rico are not found in this series. There is a caption list that was created by Xeroxine, all of the negative sleeves. I have also scanned that caption list and added it to the NARA catalog. I do want to note that 20% of the um, photos do not have any caption information, but also sometimes the caption information is not, does not fully describe what the photograph shows. And so I have an example of that here. This image has the caption, Black Community Spring Meaning, Jacksonville, Texas. I pulled this photo out of curiosity and was pleasantly surprised to find an image of a basketball game. To me, I think this is a stunning photograph with a lot of detail. We can see the dirt coming up from the players running. We can zoom in and see outfits. We can see children turned around looking directly at the camera. Photographs like this capturing everyday American life are found throughout 33SC. So let's go ahead and take a look at what else we'll find in this series. There are many photographs documenting the activities of the Extension Service employees on personnel. So according to the USDA, during the 1930s, extension agents were tasked with teaching farmers about marketing and helping farm groups organize the buying and selling of cooperatives. The extension service also employed home demonstration agents who taught farm women about nutrition, food canning, gardening, home nursing, furniture refinishing, and sewing. So 33SC has many photographs documenting this type of work by extension service agents and home demonstration agents. And many of these images show black employees of the extension service, which I've included some examples of that on this slide. So we see a home demonstration agent, the same person photographed on the left and photographed on the right. She is not identified by name in the captions, but when I was going through the negatives, I found a, this photo in the center, which was taken at the county office where she would have worked out of. Um, and presumably that name on the door in the background, Miss R.O. Phelps, is the home demonstration agent that is pictured on the left and the right. So I think researchers will find a lot of information in these photographs, not only in the captions, but if they look beyond the people in the photos. Researchers will also find many examples of extension service agents meeting with local community members, especially on their farms. And as I noted, like the caption information, sometimes it doesn't include names, but sometimes, and this is true for about 30, 25 to 30% of the photos in here, there is caption information that is really, really interesting and may not be recorded elsewhere. So I've included an example of that here. So the black extension agent that is pictured here is not identified by name, but the farmer is. And we learn a little bit about this farmer and his name is Andrew Figgin. We learned that he was born enslaved. We learned that he saved for 35 years in order to purchase land for his farm. And we learned that he had eight living children that went to high school. And I think this is really valuable information and it's a detailed caption information that researchers might find interesting. And just three more examples of what researchers will find in 33SC. These captions, again, they are providing names, dates, and detailed narratives about the subjects of the photos. These are a few examples of the types of underrepresented groups that you'll find pictured in this series. So we see Filipino migrant workers on the left, migrant Mexican workers in the center, and two Filipino home demonstration agents on the right. And those women are identified by name as well. So as a whole, 33SC does well capturing the work of extension service personnel, but also does a great job of capturing details about rural life in the 1930s. So moving on to Record Group 79, Records of the National Park Service. I'm only going to quickly touch on RG79 because it is covered pretty extensively in that Civilian Conservation Corps presentation. But in 1933, FDR signed an executive order reorganizing all federal parks. During this time period, there are eight national parks that are designated and 21 new national monuments. The Civilian Conservation Corps set up camps in these parks to improve accessibility. So they, they built roads, campgrounds, trails, and other facilities. The WPA was also tapped for some of this work. The Still Picture Branch houses just over 50 different series within RG79. And some of our RG79 photographs are really well known because they were taken by famous photographers like Ansel Adams and White House photographer Abby Rowe. But what I have listed on this slide are the RG79 series that document the New Deal era or the New Deal period. 79G is the Central Historical Series. It has a wide range of dates. 
so researchers who go to this series will likely come across a lot of photographs taken outside of the New Deal, but they will find interfiled among their photographs taken in the 30s and photographs taken of CCC workers and WPA workers. So if researchers are interested in national parks in the New Deal era, they most certainly will want to go to 79G. I also want to highlight 79SP. It is unusual to have photographs of state park facilities. This is unique in that these photographs in 79SP were taken by the Branch of Recreation, Land Planning, and State Cooperation, and that is the entity that supervised the CCC and WPA projects in state parks. So researchers normally would go to the like a state archive or a local archive for state park photographs, but this is one series that we have for researchers interested in a more local state park. And just a couple of other series that document CCC work in national parks are 79 CCC and 79 TR. Okay, moving on to record group 114, which again, during the New Deal era was called the Soil Conservation Service. And we can thank the father of soil conservation, Hugh Hammond Bennett, for the creation of this agency. Bennett had worked for the USDA and was like making notes of the damage he was seeing during soil surveys. And he made a point to like write about soil erosion and soil damage for scientific magazines and journals. He also called on the government to assist with this issue and even testified before Congress. So FDR signed the Soil Conservation Act and then created the Soil Conservation Service or the SCS. Bennett was named as the director of this new agency. So the SES offered advice and provided funding for soil protection actions, and the photographs in Record Group 114 document many of these soil conservation issues and the work of the agency. There's extensive coverage of the New Deal era within this record group. There's everything from dust bowl images to water conservation, land utilization, and surveys. Like I said, Record Group 114 is not pulled or requested as much compared to other New Deal era records, at least within the records of the Still Picture Branch. And generally, it can be a little tricky to work with this record group, and that's because of the way the images are organized. Specifically, the SCS negatives are all filed together and arranged by state and negative number, whereas all of the prints are kind of separated into various smaller series. But I'll talk about the prints in a minute. Um, but 114G is the central general negative file for the Soil Conservation Service. Researchers most often will not find themselves going directly to this series, but I do want to highlight, you know, kind of what you'll find in here and the types of images you'll find. So, for example, the image on this slide was scanned from the original negative, and I believe it, to me it's an aesthetically pleasing, almost artistic image in its, you know, composition. But the negative sleeve itself is what is interesting to me. There's a lot of detailed administrative data on this sleeve that is not typically found in other record groups or series. So this negative sleeve includes information about the name of the, the photographer, but also the exact position of the photographer, the type of camera used, the date and time that the photograph was taken. All these small details are just some researchers may find very, very valuable, and it's lacking in a lot of other series. And just to highlight a couple of other images, I noted that in Record Group 33, we didn't have, didn't have images of Hawaii or Puerto Rico, but 114G does cover, and one, Record Group 114 as a whole, does include coverage of Hawaii and Puerto Rico. So I suggest to people who are interested in looking at these territories in terms of New Deal era work or New Deal era research, definitely go to Record Group 114. And as I said, most researchers will not begin their search in the negative file in 114G. Rather, there are print series that we will typically start researchers in. So right here on this slide, I have the series of photographic prints that cover the 1930s era. Dust Bowl photographs can be found throughout RG114, but 114DL, dry land farming in Montana, North and South Dakota, and Wyoming, does have some of the best images documenting the Dust Bowl. For general research, 114SF, 114P, and 114A are probably the best places to start. And 114CT, records relating to soil conservation reproduced by the Soil Conservation Service Photography Laboratory, differs because it contains photographs that were reproduced at the request of SCS staff, not necessarily taken by SCS staff. And I talk about this to harken back to that idea 
that many of these agencies had similar interests and worked on similar projects. So 114 CT includes CCC images, it includes photographs taken on Native American reservations, and it includes photographs in national parks. Overall, I do recommend that researchers who are interested in agriculture, farming, land, soil, especially within the New Deal era, dig around Record Group 114. I think they will be pleasantly surprised by what they find, especially with some of this very detailed caption information. And lastly, in this marathon overview of New Deal era records are Record Group 221, Records of the Rural Electrification Administration, or the REA. So in 1935, 90% of rural homes in the U.S. did not have electricity, but by 1945, almost all rural homes were wired for electricity, and that is because of the work that was done by the REA. Record Group 221 is also, in my opinion, underutilized when it comes to New Deal era research. Our main series is titled 221G, Photographs Created by the Rural Electrification Administration, 221G is also a series that is comprised almost entirely of negatives with very few prints. But unlike 33SC and 114G that have these very detailed captions, the caption information in 221G is scarce, making it really difficult to work with. Having said that, there are two finding aids for 221G. The first one is a brief list of photographs and negative numbers. This list was compiled by the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association, they attempted to review all the negatives prior to the transfer to the National Archive. They did include a memo with this, and this memo reads, much additional work needs to be done before the REA collection is fully usable. A complete cataloging would be a major project involving research and publications to help identify subjects, times, and places. Perhaps someday it will be done. This effort is a beginning. We realize that many good or significant photographs remain to be discovered. I've chosen to talk about RG221 for that reason. The photographs themselves can be visually striking and compelling, and I believe there are good, great, and significant photographs filed among all of the negatives that have yet to be identified. But there's a second finding aid, as I said, of sorts, and it is a, their are photostats, essentially photocopies of all of the negative sleeves. Most of the sleeves don't have any caption information, but if there is caption information, it is captured in those photostats. And lastly, uh, 221P is a, is a print series. Some of these prints do match up to 221G, but there are far, far more negatives than there are prints. So it's not a very good or reliable way to find out what's in 221G. As far as we know, the REA staff took photographs, were not photographers by profession. So most of the photos were developed, but little effort was put in, into captioning or identifying these images. Generally, however, 221G is in chronological order by month and year. And typically the images in this series document people in their homes in rural America. So early images show both homes that have been wired for electricity and homes that hadn't been wired for electricity yet. Some of the photos are visually compelling, such as the photograph here on the left. And many of the images document how rural households utilize new electric equipment. So we see a woman pictured center here using her electric washing machine and a woman on the right using an electric range. And both of these photos were taken in you know, around 1938. The images in 221G also include photographs of REA activities. So here are a few examples of the types of images that we have documenting the work of the agency. On the top right, we have a photo of an early REA lineman, probably around 1937. Again, very little information about these captions, but generally speaking, the lower the negative number, the older the photograph. And then there's images of REA circuses, which were events put on by the REA to show off electric appliances like refrigerators, toasters, vacuums, washing machines, and so on. And lastly, prominent personalities like FDR, Eleanor Roosevelt, Harry Truman, and even Albert Einstein appear among the REA records. The list that we have that was created before the transfer to the National Archives was completed in the 1980s. And to the best of my knowledge, we haven't had anyone attempt to go through and identify additional significant images. And this, Im this event pictured, for example, was recorded and televised. But when you look online for FTR's Barnesville speech, the only image that I could find online is the one that is shown on the far right there. We can guess that these other two images just weren't widely circulated which is why we haven't seen them online.
I suspect that there are probably more images of prominent people and events. And with that, that concludes my overview, and I'm now going to pass it back to Sarah. Thank you, Caitlin. And we wanted to close our presentation with a few fun facts. Did you know that NARA is a New Deal era federal agency? On June 19, 1934, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Public Law 73-432, establishing a National Archives of the United States government. Before this, Congress set aside money in 1926 for a National Archives building, and Hoover actually laid the cornerstone in 1933. FDR appointed the first archivist of the United States, Robert D. W. Connor. The WPA played an essential role in assisting the National Archives to get off the ground, taking on the project of researching all federal archives outside of Washington, D.C. The work began in January 1936, and by the end of June, WPA workers had surveyed 2 million linear feet of records located in 5,000 government buildings across the nation. The National Archives would further support the Historical Records Survey, which originally began as a federal writers project. The survey focused on surveying, cataloging, and indexing historically significant records at the state, county, and local levels. Additionally, famous photographers' work can be found throughout our New Deal records. Photographs by Lewis Hine for the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, are found fully digitized online in the series 142H, as well as within the fully digitized series of photographs for the National Research Project on Reemployment Opportunities and Recent Changes in Industrial Techniques in 69RP. Also, a large portion of photographs by Rondell Partridge for the National Youth Administration appear online in the series 119 CAL. A few additional series have scattered photographs by photographers, such as Walker Evans, Dorothea Lang, and Arthur Rothstein. We at the National Archives house the permanent federal records related to New Deal programs. However, it's important to note that relevant records can be found at other institutions. First and foremost, we should mention that the Farm Security Administration, or FSA, photographs are within the holdings of the Prints and Photographs Division at the Library of Congress. The collection was transferred to the Library of Congress in 1944 and remains in great care. Also included in this collection at LOC are Office of War Information photographs, which the Still Picture Branch also houses a collection of. Additionally, researchers should keep regional facilities in mind when planning their research on specific areas of the United States. For example, while we house various photographs taken for and by the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, the National Archives at Atlanta has both historic photography and textual records. Also, we should note that if photographs were included within a textual report, those photographs would not be removed from the textual records that they directly support. As such, there's a chance photographs could be enclosed within records in the holdings of the Archives 2 textual reference branch. Overarchingly, given the local level focus of many projects and programs, researchers are encouraged to explore their local archives as well as state archives. And then lastly, given his huge significance in the New Deal, it's also best to review the holdings of the Franklin D. Roosevelt Presidential Library and Museum. And with that, Caitlin and I would like to thank you with, for being with us today, and we're looking forward to any questions you might have. Thank you again for watching. This ends the lecture portion of the broadcast but we will continue to take your questions about today's topic in the chat. If we do not get to your question, please send us an email at inquire at nara.gov. Note that the videos and handouts will remain available on this YouTube page and our website. We plan future programs based on your feedback. Would you please take a minute to complete our short online evaluation form? Although this concludes the video portion of the broadcast, we will continue to take your questions in the chat for another 10 minutes. Please stay if you have questions.
Thank you for joining us for today's presentation.